<laughs> Hi there, this is Sherry Hayes with MomDelights.com. I'm the mom of 15, been homeschooling for over three decades, and I want to share with you some things today that will add to your life. So go ahead and wash the dishes, vacuum the floor if you can, <laughs> fold some laundry, and just enjoy and listen as we delve into the good life in Jesus. Okay, so what are we talking about today? We're going to talk about the McGuffey readers. And some of this stuff is going to be visual. I hate to tell you that. So if you're listening by podcast, you probably want to go visit my blog at momdelights.com. And then you can, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, that's good. You can watch this on YouTube. I will be showing some things. Okay, but I will have a lot to share that's also audio. So I hope something will bless you. So I'm looking pretty good today. I just got off some FaceTime with my granddaughter, Evie, and she says I look beautiful. She's four. <laughs> so I must be okay. So I thought this is a good time to get this video done. <laughs> so we're going to talk about McGuffey's why it's good, what are some resources, and I'm going to kind of do a roundup of some different things that I've come across and some precious people who've actually used my products that I produce for McGuffey's and they talk about them, but there's also all kinds of resources out there, aren't there? Um, and so I want to share a lot of that stuff with you. So first off, I'm going to read to you from a blog post that I wrote on the McGuffey readers so that it just has a really good general overview. Here, Here's, here's the basics. The McGuffey readers have been the solution to many of my homeschool problems, and they were. <laughs> they have been. They are excellent. These are excellent books. They are simple. They are affordable, and they are readily available. They are excellent because they go from pre-K through high school, they, and even college prep, seriously. They are reusable for multiple children. They are filled with godly wisdom. Wow! with even whole passages of scripture. And I know some people have mistakenly said that the revised readers take out the scriptures. And at least in the, all the revised ones in the 1880s, these revised ones, they have whole passages of scripture in them, okay? So they did not take out the scripture. And they're a little more ecumenical, but they are still godly. <laughs> I gotta say it. Okay, um, they gently, gently build reading, vocabulary, and grammar skills far superior than any modern alternative. And I've tried a lot of stuff. I've tried the box curriculum. I've tried all kinds of things. These simple books, now believe it or not, most presidents of the United States were taught to read and write with these books right here. I'm not kidding you. Okay, they are simple because they are open and go. You can open the book and you just use it. You don't have to have a teacher's manual. You don't have to have a huge lesson plan. They're open and go. Okay, <clears throat> they take only minutes a day, not hours, not extensive, not kids going. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay, they don't require any other materials other than a pencil and a composition book, or there are some materials you can purchase, and I'll show you some of mine as well. And they are affordable because they are a one-time purchase, okay? You can purchase them one time and take your child through the whole thing, okay? They don't require peripherals. You don't have to have other things to do them. They cost little compared to other curriculum choices. Now, I think that these original McGuffey readers from the 1830s, I think they might cost nearly $100 for a whole set. That's the whole thing, okay? Just saying. It's not that expensive. When you consider the hundreds of dollars that you have to pay for a lot of box curriculums and etc., okay? And they can be found secondhand. They're all over the place. They're on eBay. They're everywhere. They can be downloaded for free. The revised editions especially, and there's all kinds of other readers like them, that you can get for free online. You can just download them and print them out yourself, okay? They are readily available because they have continually been in print since the 1830s. Can you believe it? They can be found on Amazon and many other outlets, okay? Yes, you read that right. McGuffey wrote his first reader in 1836. He did such a good job that folks have continued to buy up his books and use them over and over again for the last over 170 years, right? And um, actually, there are different versions of the McGuffey readers. We'll get into that. But they have been continually used for generations after generation after generation. They're just one of those things that stick with you, right? When I discovered these gems, I was on the verge of burnout from trying to use the Charlotte Mason method with, I think I had seven or eight kids at the time, and I was trying to figure out 
I wanted them to have the richness of Charlotte Mason with the poetry and the different things. I wanted to do quotes and copy work and dictation, all that kind of stuff. But I just could not spread myself over the eight children. Now they were all at different levels, which was part of the problem, right? And I couldn't keep track of it all, and it just wouldn't look, it was just like a burden, right? But McGuffey gave me this ability to take the Charlotte Mason method and apply it to the readers that already had these beautifully selected portions of poetry and prose and all this kind of stuff and quotes and wonderful things. So, but at first when I looked at them, I thought, what in the world am I going to do with these? But God helped me formulate a plan and I put that plan in these books. And so, um, so that's pretty much the the, the uh, audio part of this presentation. <laughs> now I'm going to get into some visuals. So for those on your podcast, you can still catch some stuff. And if you go to the YouTube video, you'll catch more. But also you can go to my blog post. I'm going to repost this um, blog post that I just read to you, which I did a few years ago. I'm going to repost that with its links and things. And you'll be able to see more visually on my blog all this kind of stuff I'm going to show you today. Okay? So first off, I'd like to show you the different versions. Everybody gets confused about this. So the brown ones that look like this, they are the ones that are published by Mott Media. It's M-O-T-T -T Media. And they took the original ones and they digitalized them and they reformatted them slightly. And they sell these and you can buy a whole set of them in a box, right? And so um, these are the ones that are the original McGuffey's from the 1830s. Okay, but then there are other ones still in print and they're the blue and red ones in yellow, right? The blue, yellow, and red ones are the revised editions and they're from the 1880s. But they've been in continuous print for a long time by different companies because they're really in the public domain. So different companies have done these at different times. This one is one of the less, lesser... And they're not done as well. I have a set that's like in pristine condition and the engraving on the spine is really deep and they're really nice. But these are the ones I let my kids use and I covered them with plastic, <laughs> just page protectors that I cut that I cut and I taped, okay? <clears throat> and so I gave these to my kids to use. But anyway, these are the ones that are the revised that you see. This is the ones you see mostly in the movies and in books and stuff. These are the ones you see mostly. Okay, but there are other things that you can get. Now, Dollar Home School offers digitalized versions of, of extra McGuffey's. <laughs> these are the, I forget what they call them, the alternate readers. I, um, I actually printed this out from the Dollar Home School and I bound it myself. I did some perfect binding. I have a tutorial on that on my blog. And this is an alternative reader and they're just as nice as the revised. This is the fifth reader of the alternative ones and you can see there are still some beautiful engravings in there and stuff and their stories are excellent. So this is another thing about McGuffey's maybe most of us didn't know. Now the now this this revised set, it actually came in like a huge curriculum package at that time called the Eclectic Learning, I guess it's a system. And with the Eclectic Learning System, there's also Harvey's Grammar. And they also had spelling, which I will show you. So this is the Eclectic Speller. And it, this was put, I think it was the American, let's see, the John Wiley and Sons put this out. And so the original set also has a speller, but it's really hard to use. This one is very simple and very practical. And so, um, you know, I can show you. It just is really gradual, and I've used this over and over again. Actually, my simply, I'm sorry, actually my splendid spelling is based partly on this book. Not completely, but partly on this book. You can see that. Hopefully that'll show you. And uh, so this has got a lot of lists in it and it has a little bit, bit of dictation, some homophones, stuff like that. But it's really good. So anyway, my splendid spelling is based on that. So that's something you look into. So let me show you some other stuff. People have actually published guides to the McGuffey readers. This guide was done by Ruth Beechick. She's the one that did the five, the three R's and she did a lot of this stuff. Ruth Beechick is so f much fun to read. Anyway. She formulated this guide. I found it, it was kind of helpful to me. I read a lot. She like talked about the different reading levels and there's lots of stuff you can, you can gain from this, but it's kind of geared more for a classroom teacher. Just telling you. This is really, really old. This is uh, the Christian Eclectic Readers and Study Guide. This is from the, I think the 90s. And so 
I, you know, it goes through each lesson in these different books, and so you can glean some ideas from that, if nothing else. Okay, so now I would like to get into some ways that you can practically apply the goodness and glean all the goodness out of those McGuffey readers for your own children. One of the, one of the easiest, cheapest ways is buy a composition book. You, all you have to do is, you can take this composition book, and if you are having a child that's just beginning to write, you can actually take in a highlighter and make your own primary guides for them to write in, and you can actually glue index cards onto the page for them to draw, and you can make your own little workbook. And it's really easy, you just use copy work, narration, dictation, and uh, you just use Charlotte Mathan stuff, and you can make your own thing. I think I have a whole video on that someplace. I'll, I'll find it. <laughs> anyway, so you can do that. It's really easy to do with these books. And what, you've got a 50 cents to a dollar, and you've got your McGuffey's workbook, and it is excellent. I have stacks of composition books that my children have done just that way, and they turned out really sweet. But at a certain point, even that was kind of burdensome. I thought there's got to be a simpler way to do it. So I made my own lesson books. And here they are. Ta -da! So anyway, this is the primary level. This is going to be when the children are first starting out to read and to write. And it's very simple, and I have all kinds of instructional videos on this. But you can see it has the primary lines and etc. And places for little kids to draw. My kids love to draw. Not, all the, not every child loves to draw. Here I have examples of how they can be used. So this is this is a big seller. This sells a lot, by the way. <laughs> but I also have different levels. I have this level. It's a little. Um, oh, doesn't have the dot. Well, it does have the dotted lines, doesn't it? But it's a little different in that. See, here's where all this is. This is primarily. I had this idea to be used with the second. Um, the second reader of the original. See, I switch from the original readers to the revised readers after the second original reader because the third original reader is a little macabre in some ways and it's not as rich it's not as enriched with all the different types of language and prose that came a little later so um that's how I do it <laughs> anyway so level two is like that and level three is a little bit different because all the dotty lines are gone you see and then I have level four and level four is even a little more simplified. And level five, which is like when you're really up there, it's basically just a, a two-page spread out for each lesson. Really easy to get through. Um, and so those are the books that I've made for this. I also have a free download of a, a simple, and it's, it's really like, well, I have a daughter. She was kind of distracted, and she didn't like to write much. And I know there are a lot of boys like that, too. So what I did, I simplified everything into just one page, and I did it specifically with a reader for her. And I have free pages of that on my blog someplace, so I'll try to link that below. <laughs> Lots of linking I've got to do. So anyway, so now I have also, I want to share with you a lot of different resources and different people that have, you know, uh, that have YouTube channels and that have websites and things as resources for the McGuffey's readers. So I'm going to share a lot of different links and different things and these are not necessarily in the order of importance. They're just kind of as I was jotting things down. So NikkiTruesdell.com, she's really active on Instagram and she has a website and she writes a lot about the McGuffey readers. Um, there's something called the McGuffey Reader's Guide .com, and it has some charts about the McGuffey. It's kind of interesting. Dollar Homeschool has all kinds of the eclectic learning system that you can download, and uh, you, you have to pay for that. But it's not free, but it's still pretty, it's really reasonable. And I've done the guides for some of those. I actually contracted with the fellow that runs that website, and I actually did some writing for him on the McGuffey Readers. Okay. Okay, Mott Media, I mentioned that before. That's where you'll find the original McGuffey's, and they have all kinds of McGuffey's resources. They also have the Ray's Arithmetic, which is part of that eclectic learning st stuff, okay? Underthehome.org actually uses the McGuffey's, and it's totally free. The Robinson Curriculum uses the McGuffey Readers. Uh, EverydayEducation.com talks a lot about the McGuffey's, okay? Now, here are some uh, YouTube channels. And uh, Simply Sweet Homeschool uses the McGuffey Readers. Revival Acres uses them, and they actually, she actually uses my uh, lesson books, as does Our Sweetie Bird's Home. Now, Our Sweetie Bird's Home, she, um, 
she also has done a review on Splendid Spelling, and she goes through it. So that's a good, and I'll put those links below too. Karen Rodriguez, she um, does the Robinson Curriculum. She she kind of works with that company, and she talks about the McGuffey Readers. Okay, homeschooling with the Riveras. They are using the home the the McGuffey Readers, and it's kind of interesting to find out what they've been doing. Okay, then there is uh, McGuffey's Online Tutor .com, and also the Land of Kakiak. She has a whole bunch of cool stuff that um, that she um, she makes available, and it looks really good. So it's something to check out for sure. And um, there's also another lady that kind of took this idea about the Charlotte Mason and the McGuffey's, and she made some really pretty. Charlotte Mason workbook type things. So you can check that out too. So anyway, so there are just some ideas of stuff you can check out and take advantage of. And you can probably find stuff on your own too. And you can make your own stuff. I mean, it's not that hard. You can go on Canva and you can take one of their templates and you can make your own thing. <laughs> I like making my own thing. I like making my own thing and then giving it away. That's my fun. Or making it so affordable that you can afford to purchase it, which leads me to my announcement. And my announcement is that a dear lady, now this has been in the back of my mind for a while, but a dear lady in Australia, you know who you are, uh, she asked if I would make a book filled with notebooking pages so that she didn't have to be shuffling pages all around when her kids wanted to do some notebooking on different subjects. And so it was in the back of my mind for a while. I really wanted to do this for a while. But I just, I don't know, I just didn't take the time, you know, however that, but this really catapulted me to an idea that I could really do this. And so I was talking to the Lord about it, and I thought, Lord, you know, I can just go on Canva and just whoop something out and just get her done. And, but I thought, nah, I don't, I don't know if I want to do that. And he just kept dropping ideas into my mind. So I decided <laughs> that I would go ahead and I'm going to do a commonplace book. Well, actually, it didn't start out that way. I was going to call it like the notebooking book or something like that. But then I just, I just one idea after the other. I do believe that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of Lights, with whom there is no variation of shadow or shadow of turning. So I believe he dropped these ideas into my mind according to my personality, of course. And so I came up with the idea of creating a commonplace book in three different levels and I decided that it would be fun to do the art myself and to just format it all myself I'm going to do the art I'm going to digitalize it and I'm going to color it and then I'm going to go ahead and submit it and have it printed on Amazon I'm also going to offer it for free so if you are able to see this I can show you previews of some of the art I've been doing so here are some of my little scribbles and this is this would be the um, the the third level. I'm going to do three levels. I'm going to do like primary with the dotty lines, and then secondary, more for like upper elementary, junior high kind of age. And then the um, the number three will be the high school level. So here's here's something I'm almost done with this portion, and so I'm just refining it. And let's see, did I show you this one? Here's one that I'm working on as well. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to have some pages for instruction. I'm going to have a list page. I'm going to have a contents page with this. And I'm not sure exactly how many pages, but we'll decide. And I'm going to try to have like one page mostly for like facts and drawings. And then the, the back side of that will be a place to do like a little essay, what have you. And um, so that's my ideas for this. I also want to compile a book for moms. It's going to be kind of like a cyclopedia of lists and so what I want to do is I'm going to call all the books and different things I have and I'm going to make lists of ideas of things that you and your children can study right I'm gonna have lists and lists and lists God willing um, not just of ideas to study but maybe some books you know that are classics and like from my I have a free homeschool guide to kind of I'm gonna to try to do that and also I'm going to try to um, in there have a list of activities that you can do activities that you can apply to anything you're studying kind of like what you would do for unit studies but you don't have to nail it down necessarily you can just go and if you need an idea you can just go hopefully it'll be alphabetical <laughs> and you can go through there and glean some ideas of different activities you know I have so much research just sitting in binders here of all these different activities and different things you can do if I could compile it into one huge encyclopedia for moms as a reference work for you so that you can take this 
and you can help your kids like navigate through all the different learning things. Also, a lot of us, we have to report to the officials and give them an actual plan, right? <laughs> Even if you don't do it all, you still have to have the plan in place. <laughs> so anyway, um, I thought that that would be fun to do that. And I want to put this all together in a system. I want to have the spelling and some, I might revamp the lesson books as well. And I might have a quick and easy McGuffey's lesson book. And I want to have the encyclopedia, and I might make a commonplace book for moms where we could record what we learn too, right? Even if it's about, a, you know, getting a mortgage for a house, which is a great learning curve, right? So anyway, so um, I might, what I'm going to put this together in a whole system, and right now I think I'm going to be calling it Simply Learning, because I also want to develop a math program that will take a person, see, I have math books, vintage math books. And the math book is about this thick, and it's, you know, it's pretty tiny script, but font, it's a pretty tiny font. But it's about this thick, and it goes from primary all the way through to, like, pre-algebra in one volume. And, of course, we don't want to do that with our kids, but what I'm trying to say is, back then, it wasn't graded. It was just like you're going through, you're learning the math. It's not first, second, third, fourth, fifth, like that. And I was, I've been looking for this for a long time. I can't find it. That's why I want to do it, right? It's because I want to have a math system that takes people, their children, from the primary stage all the way up through pre-algebra without having to um, worry about grades. Like, wherever your child is at. Because a lot of kids, like, you, know, it might be nine years old, and they're just grasping some of those math concepts. And so they feel stupid because they're, like, in the little kitty books. Well, why do that? Or you might have a nine-year-old that's, like, he's already in pre-algebra. Why do you have to put him in a stupid... Why do you have to, like, go to some totally different curriculum and, you know, all that? Yeah, no, you don't have to do that. We can just have a system that just gradually takes a person through all the stages of math, and then you're done, right? And it would be, I don't know if it would be a number of books, but, I mean, that's that's in my heart. I don't i don't really have anything. I've tried some different things, and they got messed up. <laughs> Maybe it's good they did. But anyway, so that's my vision for the future. But anyway, I'd like to have a total system where there's so much freedom, and it's so open-ended, but it is so that a mama... My mama's work is cut down. So it allows you to have freedom with your kids with some structure and also something to present to officials and relatives and all those people that are always looking at you, which is, it's not bad to have some accountability. But anyway, um, so so the, all those people you're account accountable to, you can show them something of what you're doing, but you can still have freedom within that. So that's my vision. That's what I'm hoping for. And so if you could be praying for me, because I'm having so much fun. I am loving doing this hard. <laughs> I'm just flowing with ideas, but sometimes I need help putting it all together. Because remember, I have a creatively distracted brain. <laughs> God has to help me every day. <laughs> I, I did get ready today. <laughs> anyway, so I think you can totally get that. So now I will give you something more. So I'm going to read to you some scriptures about rest. And so you can just close your eyes, just listen and enjoy, okay? Matthew 11:28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Now Isaiah 30:15. For this is what the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, has said, In repentance and rest you will be saved. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you are not willing, sad, but in, in quietness and trust and rest. That's where we're strong. Exodus 14.4 The Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. Psalm 116.7 Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt generously with you. Psalm 13.6 I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. <laughs> so I hope those scriptures will encourage you today that everything we do will be done in rest and in trust and in quietness of heart. And when we do that, that's when we are our strongest. 
So thank you for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. Please like and subscribe and stars and and, and reviews and passing it on all that same stuff I always say. Bye-bye. <laughs>